Okay, today I'm going to show you how to hand tie your sled. If you got to do a repair or you're building a sled from scratch. So basically I start off with a line about six, six and a half feet long. Put a double knot in the one end so it won't, won't slip through. Get the first knot, shrink it up to the size you want, make sure that one's tight. Then go around just one more time, single, through there. Cut that off. Now you don't want that slipping out, so we're going to melt that down so there's no chance of it coming apart down the road. This is a part you need either real tough fingers or a little bit of spit. Helps prevent burns. Anyways, to start it off, I always use a like a darting needle, I guess. Get the one in it in. Then I always want to start, so this loop is down at the stainless steel screw eye. Because when I tighten it up and do the tie, I want to go from bottom to the top, because that's the narrowest. You can cinch it down tight. You'll see what I mean as we go. I come through the stanchion. Through the knot that I had made. I'm going to keep that tight down as close as possible to the eye. Now these these knots here, these ties for the runners have got to be super tight. There's no no room for, for slack in these at all. It's not like the ones that come across uh, from your stanchions for your crossers. They can be looser depending on the flexibility you want your sled to have. You want it stiffer for a cargo sled where you're going to be carrying lots of weight. But for these ones here, you want tight. So loop it through, pull real tight, and try and keep that knot from slipping farther up. Up this way, you don't want it going up there. Generally, for, for these ties, I'll do five, five times around and pull these real tight. That's where your hands can take a beating on this. Some people like to use pliers. I just find they kind of get in the way or or like a ropers, tight ropers kind of glove. But I can't really work with them, so I do it with bare hands and you kind of get used to it after a while. Each time you go through, just give it a crank and hold it tight. Don't let it slip back or you'll pretty much be starting from scratch again. It's not a job where you can stop right in the middle here now and take a break, so... I try to keep them all nice and nice and flush, stacked on top of each other, not, not overlapping. Okay, so now I have five. And this one here, I just come up, and I'll just hold this short piece here. This is where I want to loop through. So I come down and I drop it over top of the inside tie, and down and underneath the outside of the tie. Pull it all the way through, and I come back over the top of both of them, stick it through that short piece that I'm holding, that short loop there. I pull that super tight. Now that there cinches everything together. I don't need the needle anymore. It's kind of just in my way. So this is where we start. Going around each time. You reef, reef it down as tight as possible. As you're doing that, and working your way up towards the stanchion, that compresses this, pulls it all in, and makes that tie super, super tight. 
this part usually goes pretty fast. But I'll do well, as many wraps as it takes, but there's probably probably close to 18 or 20 times that I'm going to be going around this. Because I want to squeeze in the top of that as tight as possible. So that way there's no, no play in the mortise and tenon joint going from your stanchion down into the runner. Like I said, these got to be super tight and the ones going across from one side to the other on your crossers, I usually keep those not loose, but I don't pull them near as tight as what I do these ones, generally speaking, so I can keep uh, better flexibility. Now with the tip, once I've got my last wrap on there, I stick it through the void in between the stanchion and the tie. I don't pull it all the way through. I just grab the string itself, like another loop, and I just pull it tight. Tight like that. Okay. Then I'm going to do that kind of loop, not again. Bring it through again, just like a shoelace. Pull that tight. Now I take the very end of my line and I stick it through this, that second loop. This is my final knot, and I just pull that tight. Once that's done, we cut off the excess. Like I say, you're going to be left usually with about a foot, but if you cut it too short and you try to tie it, you're trying to work with this short little nub at the end of it. It makes it really hard to pull. Same thing with this one here. I just melt the end. Let it melt back till it almost hits the knot. Bit of spit on your finger and just melt that nylon right to the knot. That way nothing will ever fall apart. That's how you do a repair or a new tie if you're building your own sled.